begin? Can you just introduce like uh, what is that you do and what is your experience with AEM and what is your expectation out of the class? Yeah, hi Rushi. So I've, I've been working with the CMS like for the other different CMS for the past five, six years, but you know, I used to work on, I'm still working on team size and for the past five years, but uh, going by the trend, if you see in the market, you know, not many clients are using the intro and also I want to make a shift to some other uh, corner management system. Sure. Okay. Where are you put up? Sorry? Where are you put up? I'm right now in Austin, but I work for a California based company. So okay. I'm remotely from Austin. Fine. Great. Okay. I'm just alert. And what is your experience with AEM? Have you worked on AEM earlier, at least no, parts of it? No, I've been through? trying to learn it for the past three years, but I haven't really got much time. Hold that fine. So, okay. One day I could, you know, find some time, so I thought I could learn it now. All right, thanks. And uh, what is your understanding of Java? I mean, are you familiar with Java? I'm, I'm okay with J, Java J3, but, you know, the frameworks, I, know, I don't have much an idea about it. All right. I mean, at least the core Java and the uh, JSP servlets part. Can you manage with that? Yeah, yeah, I can. All right. Fine. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. So, uh, training is my passion. Uh, so, what I've been uh, doing is, uh, I've been working on the Adobe Marketing Suite. Right. So, when I say Adobe Marketing Suite, all right, it's a collection of Adobe tools. Right. Uh, it's your Adobe Experience Manager. AIM is one of it under the whole Adobe. The umbrella. There are other marketing. I mean, if you see the market, right? Let me pull up that slide for you. Right. So if you see the Adobe Marketing Cloud, right? So the center thing goes as one product suit. Okay. So if you see this, Adobe has so Adobe Social. Right. Then there is Analytics. There is Target. Right. Adobe Target. Right. There's Adobe Experience Manager. Right. So this training is primarily on the Experience Manager part. Right. So this takes care of their web content management system. All right. This is the one that is primarily used for building websites. All right. So what is that that distinguishes this Adobe from a typical Java-based application or a .NET-based application? Right. So basically, does anybody wants to take a shoot at that? What is that that distinguishes Adobe from the other content management systems? I mean, in the research that you have done at least. Why did you opt for AEM? Uh, as far as I, you know, I'm hearing about the AEM, so I think it, it's a user interface that makes it easy for, you know, the marketing authors and everything, the publishing and every, everything very easy because it has mobile emulators and everything so that everything is included in one suit. You don't have to, you know, go try different tools to see if your sites are responsive or you can do everything in at one place. Correct. You can do everything at one place. Correct. So basically, you have your digital asset management, right? If you take any website, yeah. If you take any websites, right? It has images, it has videos, it has PDFs, right? It has everything. So this AEM, it comes with a centralized area for storing all your digital assets. That is called as the digital asset management. Okay. So basically, AEM has some of some features which which cannot be there in another uh, CMS, right? So few of it are, one is it comes with social collaboration, all right? When I say social collaboration, right, it couples, it couples well with Facebook, it couples well with Twitter, all right? So it's just about one configuration and you, you can be able to collaborate with these users, right? Basically, you can create forums, you can create blogs, you can create a whole lot of stuff to go social, all right? That is very one, one important thing. Then it allows you for the digital asset management, right? So all your digital assets go and sit under one thing. And the main important thing here is there's something called as the multi-site manager. Okay. So basically, you are going to build just one version of a website, and then you are going to roll that website into different channels, right? So it's a multi-channel platform. When I say multi-channel, it's just one-time development effort, and I can roll it out to my mobiles, I can roll it out to my tablets, I can roll it out to the desktops, right? It's just one configuration thing. But think of a 
traditional application, right? So you need to uh, build something on uh, specific to the device, right? When you want to build something on Android, you need to build it again. That is the primary thing here, all right? So other than that, it also has a lot of other features, right? Your caching, it, it provides a wonderful mechanism for caching, all right? So that is something that is great here. And it also couples tightly with your analytics, all right? It can be any of your uh, analytic solutions like your Google Analytics, right? Or it can be your Adobe Analytics, or it can be any analytic solution, right? It's just injecting one JavaScript, right? It provides you placeholders for injecting these things, right? Analytics. What is the advantage if you have analytics? Right? You want to, you want to know how your website is performing, or you want to track the users, right? from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, who are the users who logged in? What are the user actions that they did? You want to see a solution, right? You want to see a report of what all has been happening on your website. So it couples well with your analytics, right? Analytics, this Adobe marketing, Adobe has a analytics suite here, right? So how it works is, you'll take the, you can map the coordinates, all right? For example, the number of users and the location, all right? And you can get a graph out of it. So that solution is already ready. You just need to plug in those features and your website is ready, all right, with the real-time data. And there is something called as the campaign management, all right. So when I say campaign, right? say suppose you are a product company, all right, you want to, uh, and you have products uh, which are sold seasonally. For example, in winter you want to sell something, in summer you want to sell something, all right. So basically what you do is, you are going to, track the users. For example, there can be some attributes based on which you track. Right? For example, I have men in the age of 25 to 30 right, who are logging in, in who logged in summer. Right? So I can create segments out of those. Right? I can add those people into a segment and I can target a campaign for them in winter saying we have a new uh, range of clothing for winter. Okay. So basically, all these campaign management, right? And I can also, there are something called as teasers. I can do the campaigns. Right? It takes care of my entire brand management. Right? So everything, again, it's just a plugin and it's just a matter of configuring how you want it. Right? So there's something called as the media optimizer. Right? So when so, I say media, uh, yeah. So these can work independently without the experience manager also? Experience manager, see, it gives you placeholders for all these things, all right? But yes, these segments, campaigns, teasers, it can still work without the campaign. But campaign is altogether a new solution which which add few more enhancements to this these things, right? For the campaign management, all right? Okay. So if you take take the Adobe target, right? Yeah. Even tar target is same way, right? You have some products and you want those to get published to your channel ads, you want to see what to see on your channel ads, how to target the users, all right? So this target will help you optimize those things, right? You can do everything with your experience manager. It's a framework, it gives you placeholders, yeah. all right? If you use these solutions, additionally, they give you a few more things and for the digital market, yeah, see basically, when you're learning such content management systems, it's very important to understand the roles of users, right? Who are all the users that get into the system? So when you think of this AEM, all right, what are the kinds of users? It's very important to understand the stakeholders of AEM. One is the digital marketeers. Okay, when I say marketeers, so marketeers are the people who are responsible for how your website is performing, right? They are responsible for the uh, look and feel of your website. They are responsible for what what are the kind of content that goes into your website, all right? And they are responsible for monitoring the metrics of the website, how many people, how many people, how, how many conversions, all right? So basically this AEM, right, it facilitates in something called as lead to cash. Are you guys aware of this lead to cash? Yeah. Right, conversion of a lead into a sale. Right. They're responsible for uh, 
right? So usually when you think of the digital market here, then if you say suppose you have a big requirement and you're a new company, right? So you would have a marketing team. So your marketing team, right, they would go down to the customers and they would tell we have this website and this is a very cool website with all these features. So as a client or as a product buyer and they go and advertise this. So for them instead of manually doing stuff, all right, manually tracking things, manually doing stuff, all right, there's a complete product suit that you can use. Okay. So if you buy the Adobe suit, your time to market, all right, your time to market significantly decreases because decreases. How is the time to market decreasing? Right? Because your development time right, is significantly less. Right? It's significantly less. Why is it significantly less? Because this AEM comes with a set of features which are commonly used across websites. Right? This comes with a set of features which are commonly used across websites. For example, it can be your tracking, it can be your campaign management for your websites. Right? There is something called as the media optimizer. For example, your website, it has to, you have some images related to your website. Right. And when you have channel ads, when I say channel ads, for example, on Google, when you click on a website, right, you can you can enhance the look and feel of your website on your search engines, right? Uh, the relevant search engines. So what you do is in your media optimizer, you tell on these media channels what are the kind of images, what are the kind of videos that I need to show up. Right. You can configure all those things, and you can also track. After changing the images, after changing the videos, right? After changing the relevant content on these search engines, how is the optimization? I mean, or how is the uh, performance, right? So you can monitor the expenses. You can do everything with this media optimizer. Right? So basically, what I want to tell you here is, right? and why why is that people choose AEM? Right? If you see, there are there is Gartner's and Forrester reports. Right. So there's a kind of study that these organizations, there's something like Forbes or IT, okay. So what they do is they rate your CMS tools and they have some metrics based on which they measure. Right. They have placed a top quadrant, right, on top quadrants from the last three years. Right from the last three years. So basically, you are a big organization, and say suppose you have a legacy website. All right. So when you have those, and how do you consider going for AEM? All right. So there would be an architecture team within your organization, all right, who are going to evaluate all the CMS tools available. So when they do their evaluation, right, they open these reports, right. People usually trust Gartner's and Forrester. Right? They open these reports and then they see the metrics. And in those metrics, right, there will be the response times. Right? There will be a lot of other features based on which this tool is rated. And that is how they pick up AEM. All right? So what is that that is driving people to AEM? Let's understand. Okay. 